Hello. I just wanted to share with you guys a time in my life where I used to ask the Heavenly Father, why did you create me? I used to tell him, all I do is eat, sleep, shop, and work. I don't understand. Is that all you made me for? That's all you created me for, just to do that? What is the purpose of this? Eat, sleep, shop, and work. I wasn't happy with my life. And at that time, I didn't know that I didn't like routines. I found that out after I became homeless. And so the routine of going to work, being a bus driver, doing the same thing, picking up people, dropping off people every day, would just drive you crazy. Doing the same thing every day, day in, day out. Eat, sleep, shop, work. And I used to ask him, why did you create me for this? What is my purpose here on earth? I think for some people, maybe some people is fine with that. And maybe some people isn't. We all don't know what's in everyone's heart unless they actually speak the words and tell us what's in their heart and in their mind. But I'm sure there are some people that felt the same way I did or feel the same way I did. So now I know my purpose. And I found all this out when I became homeless. When I became homeless, I found out my likes and my dislikes. I found out my purpose on earth. And my purpose on earth is to help homeless people. And I love having a purpose on earth. It feels so good to have a purpose and to know your purpose and then start fulfilling your purpose. It is so It just feels so good inside. To help somebody, to help people. People that need help. People need help, especially homeless people. I did not know that homeless people was treated so bad. I knew they were treated bad, but not to the extent that I found out later how they were treated. So, I just wanted to share that with you, that when you find out your purpose on earth and you start to fulfill your purpose. It feels so good inside. And I know that I'm going to do a lot more than making videos for homeless people to watch. For homeless people, for people that have a roof over their head or and about to become homeless. I know that I'm going to do a lot more than making videos. And I welcome that day when I can do more to help homeless people. So I just feel so good inside. I really do to know all the things that I love to do because when I was in the doing the right race, you know, I couldn't even name one thing that I love to do and now I can name six and seven things 
now it's seven because I can add um, helping homeless people to the list of things that I love to do. So now that's seven. When I was working that job, I couldn't name one. So I hope one day that if you felt, ever felt like I used to feel, like, why am I here? Is this all to life? I hope you find your purpose and that you start fulfilling it. But you know, like they're saying, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> because, man, I didn't know that I was going to become homeless for over 12 years to fulfill my purpose. But now that 12 years is behind me, I'm glad. <laughs> but if you was to go back 12 years I'd be like no I don't want to do that can I just help them without becoming homeless <laughs> I don't want to be homeless I helped it just make me rich and I help the homeless people I don't need to be homeless but I know that the best way to help people is to walk in their shoes When I think about Yahshua, the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ, he came in a physical body, and he walked this earth, and he experienced the same things that we experience today. So he understands us, you know. And he had to go through that to understand us. to help us be saved <laughs> to save our life to save our souls you know what I'm saying he, he had to go through that but so now I know that what to do what to say to help homeless people because I've been through it A lot of times, people that never been homeless, and they help homeless people, you know, they help homeless people by maybe giving them money, maybe buying them food, maybe buying them necessities, but they talk down to them at the same time. Just imagine how a homeless person feels inside when you're talking down to them because I had people to do that to me. So I know now that when I start helping homeless people in other ways where I might be face to face with them, or even in a video, not to talk down to them. So I know that now. But those people that were helping me that never been homeless, they didn't know that because they never been homeless. So everything I went through was to help homeless people. So I had to walk in their shoes. What else do people do? What else? <sighs> oh, I thought of something. People when they help homeless people, they want to help homeless people the way they want to help homeless people. And I can kind of understand that. But if you really want to help homeless people, ask them, what can I do to help you? What is it that you need? Or make a list. If you're a person with money, it means to help people and you know a homeless person that you would like to help go to them say to them make a list of the things that you need 
And when they make that list and give it to you, then you pick out the things that you are willing to do on that list. But ask them first. Don't just do whatever you want to do because whatever you, what you want to do for them might not be what they want. And it might not be really much help at all. But you might be forcing them to do something they don't want to do, to take something that they don't want to take. I had these people call themselves trying to help me and they were trying to send me to another city somewhere else. I'm like, I don't want to go there. I want to stay here. That's what I was thinking in my head. And I was watching them. And it was two men and they were talking. And one was saying, yeah, I was thinking about she can go send, send so-and-so. I can't remember where it was. He was saying I could go. She can go over since to, to, to this place, to this city, whatever, because they have this and they have that over there. And she can go. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm a grown-ass woman. Ask me, do I want to go somewhere else? Ask me. Don't just, I'm not a child. That's another thing. When, people, when you become homeless, people treat you like a child. You know, Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's not right. Um, the last three and a half years of his life, he was homeless. He said he didn't have anywhere to lay his head. Now, he is powerful he is the son of Yahweh the most high his son in a physical body basically he's the heavenly father in the physical body to be honest with you because they are one he's just in a physical body so Imagine people walking up to Yahshua when he was on the face, walking the face of the earth and treating him like a child. Imagine, just because he's homeless, you're treating the son of the Most High, the Lamb, the one that has come to save the world, and you treating him like a child just because he's homeless? That's crazy. So people think that when you have money, when you have material possessions, that that makes you What does, what does that make you? An adult? And when you don't have money and material possessions, even though you're adult, you're really a child, right? Because kids don't have money and material possessions, so you treat it like a child? I don't know. All I know is... People respect you according to how much money and material possessions you have. That's worldly. And church people do that too. Yeah. Church people would do it in a heartbeat. I had someone to do me like that. And she called herself teaching the Bible and all this stuff. And I was around her with other women. And she talked down to me. Only me. She didn't do the other women like that. I never told her I was homeless. Somebody else told her. And I had to call that person and tell them that nobody needs to know that I'm homeless. That's, they don't need to know that.
So now, just because she told her that, I get no respect from this lady that teaches the Bible. <laughs> oh, boy, pick and choosing. Pick and choosing. So, I just stopped going around that lady. <sighs> I'm like, I've been... I've been homeless for 12 years. You know how long I've been going through this crap with people. I went through a lot of it in the beginning of my homelessness, but I do not have friends. I do not have friends. I do not have so-called friends. There's some people I met during Uber. They're from Florida. And they come here sometimes. And I consider them friends. I don't know if they consider me friends. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes you can... You can... Um, someone is your friend. You consider someone a friend, but they might not consider you a friend. Because I had people to, you know... Um, they considered me a friend, but I didn't consider them a friend. I just didn't. We just didn't click like that. <laughs> well, they didn't click with me. So um, I, I didn't consider them, them a friend because I go out to eat with my friends. Um, you, I go places where I'm with my friends. I talk on the phone with my friends. And I was just, I was a crochet instructor to her. And I don't know. There was a culture different. There was an age different. It's just, I didn't feel like we had anything in common. I didn't consider her a friend. But she would say all the time, Essie, I consider you a friend. And, you know, I mean, what do you do when you don't consider that person a friend? But they consider you a friend. So, that's why I say, I don't know if they consider me a friend. Other than that, I don't have any friends, and I choose to be that way because I don't want to hear people's opinions. I don't want to hear people's, you know, telling me what I should do and how I should live my life and criticizing and putting me down. And because I had a couple of friends that do that, they were like really putting me down, criticizing. Um, I was like, oh no. I had to flee from them. You're not going to be putting me down and, and lifting yourself up. And Uh-uh. No. So I literally don't have any friends. I talk to my mother a lot. A whole lot. <laughs> Sometimes we don't get along. But she's the only person I talk to. when I talk, And then I talk to the Uber riders when I do Uber. But that's, that's about, oh yeah, I talked to the lady at the gas station. I talked to her a lot. Yeah. But other than that, I don't have no friends. And I'm not, I'm not uh, sad about it either. <laughs> I talk to Yahweh a lot. And now, I'm talking to you guys a lot. Hey, maybe I'll consider you my friends. Until I say something you guys don't like. <laughs> oh, but it's okay. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you about when you realize or you find your purpose in life. It's so fulfilling and it feels so good to carry out your purpose. Especially if it involves helping people. So when I pass away one day, I had a dream I was going to be 95 when I passed away. <laughs> when I passed away, I, I, uh, I prayed and asked Yahweh, how old am I going to be when I pass away? <laughs> and I had a dream that I was in the backyard of a house. And I was sitting in like one of those lawn chairs 
and I was 95 years old. I was sitting in the lawn chair by a pool, and I was 95. So I woke up, and I said, so I'm going to be 95 years old when I pass away? I told Yahweh that I want to see my grandkids. I'm 49 years old, and I don't even have one child. But I had a dream that I was going to have two kids, a boy and a girl. So I told Yahweh, I want to see my grandkids. You know, I'm having kids so late in life. I want to see my grandbabies. So my kids cannot wait to my age to have kids. <laughs> because I won't be here if they do that. Uh-uh. So they're going to have to have kids like in their 20s. And hopefully get married and have kids in their 20s because I won't be here if they wait decide to have kids when they're 50 years old just imagine <laughs> I'll be a hundred a hundred and something so yeah they're gonna have to have kids get married and have kids at a younger or a lot younger than me so I can see my grandkids you know and hold them and love them So, yeah, I think that's it, y'all. I need to go to sleep. I got to do Uber again today. And I need to do more than 20 trips. I did 20, well, yes, technically yesterday, because it's early in the morning. I did 20 on Friday, and I need to do, like, 25 today on Saturday. I don't know if that's going to happen, though. <laughs> but wishful thinking hopefully it does because if I do 25 Saturday then I can do 15 trips on Sunday but we'll see good night you guys and I will talk to you another day <laughs>